Hello, good day and welcome to this episode of our class. I guess my audio is fine today. So today is our first class and we are taking up from introduction to Forex. All right. So, introduction to Forex. So, today we are going to be able to know what is actually forex trading forex trading is the art of electronically buying and selling of trading instruments such as currencies commodities stocks energies etc simultaneously without holding a physical asset and this is achieved by fluctuation in price over a period of time in order to make profit. So forex trading, first of all, it is done electronically. It's done electronically and um, it is buying and selling. So that's why it's called trading. Buying and selling takes place. Now, what do you actually buy and sell? You buy and sell assets and here they are called trading instruments they are called trading instruments so examples of such trading instruments are currencies commodities stocks energies so while we go down the class we're going to see examples of these trading instruments which you are trading so this buying and selling happens simultaneously that is you can you can be buying while someone else is buying, and you can actually buy and sell a particular commodity at the same time, a particular currency, a particular stock, a particular energy at the same time without holding a physical asset. So you are not buying a physical asset. You're not buying probably land or gold or something physical, no. You're not holding an asset. So you are only taking advantage of the fluctuation in price over a period of time because price changes over a period of time. And your primary goal is to make profit. That is your primary goal, to make profit. So forex trading has no relationship with um, Ponzi schemes or what have you. So while we go down the class, you can be able to see the realistic nature of forex. Now, since we discussed that we could not hold physical assets and we are trading um, commodities, um, trading instruments, one can ask what is actually traded in the forest market, in the financial market. So this is a business where the commodity used as a means of exchange is money. And the commodity being exchanged is money. So it's all about money. So what you use to trade is money. What you're actually trading is money. So it's pure finance, just like you have in your finance um, sector. That's the banking sector and uh, maybe the insurance and the what have you. So most times they are actually um, trading money. They keep creating products for us, but just creating different products that are money related. And we all know that any business that is 
built on money. That is any business that money is the commodity, because every business is transacted with money. But any business that money is the commodity is actually a, a high yield business. So Forex is one of them. Now, what are these trading instruments? What are these trading assets that can be traded in the financial market? We named currencies, commodities, energies. There are a whole lot of them, but this is just an example that we have here. So in the financial market, currencies are being traded. Examples of these currencies, we have the Euro, we have the USD, we have GDP, New Zealand, Dollar, we have the CHF, JPY, AUD, and CAP. These are accreditation. So these are representing currency of different nations. So this is what we are trading. This is what we are buying and selling simultaneously. So this is what, these are the currencies that the price are fluctuating and we are here to make profit. Now, we don't only trade currencies. Currencies are popularly known. We also trade commodities such as gold, silver, and um, platinum. There are many commodities. So while you go into trading, you actually see all other commodities, but these are examples. Under energies, we have natural gas, we have crude oil. So there are other um, sources of energy that are being traded. These are, these are trading assets, so they are being traded. So now the last one on the line here is cryptos, so that's the cryptocurrency. So you can actually trade the cryptocurrency in the forest market. So maybe you want to learn how to trade crypto trading. So basically, once you learn how to trade the forest market, you can actually trade the cryptocurrency market. So examples of the cryptocurrency, we have the Bitcoin, we have the Ethereum, we have Litecoin, we have Ripple, Algorand. There are many examples of the crypto currency. Now, we're going to take our time to measure on the most popular trading instruments, which are currencies. Now, currencies, currency symbols always have three letters. So we already know what currencies are. Currencies are means of exchange for different nations. For instance, maybe if you are in the United States of America, so the US dollar is the means of transaction there. So the paper money, that's their currency, that's what they use. So, and here we don't exchange physical assets in the forest market, we do not exchange physical assets. So, these currencies are written in three letters. So the, 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 the currency symbols always have three letters. We are the first two letters identify the name of the country and the third letter identifies the name of that country's currency. So for instance, we have the, the NZD. So the NZ stands for New Zealand, YD stands for dollar. So this way we can, um, we can clearly interpret other currency symbols. So probably going back to the examples we have on currency symbols, we have the E, we have the, the E, U, R, that is Euro. So remember we have the European Union, where you have a collection of countries that are using the same currency, they have one, Central Bank, which is the Central Bank of um, that's the ECB, the European Central Bank. So these collection of countries, they have to 15, 16 of them, they're making use of the euro. So that's why you have the EUR as the euro. Then you have the USD, that is the United States dollar. We have the GBP, that's the Great Britain Pound. NZD, that's our former example, New Zealand dollar. CHF, that's the 
Switzerland dollar. I believe the CH should come from the Latin spelling. We have JPY, that is the Japanese yen. AUD, Australian dollar. CAD, Canadian dollar. There are many currency pairs, but these ones are the major currency. There are many uh, currencies. These ones are the major currencies. So now, this is a picture of distribution of um, currencies in the financial market. So remember that in this market, we are trading um, different trading instruments, different assets. Those assets could be currencies, they could be commodities, they could be energy, they could be cryptos, they could be a whole lot. So now from here, we, we can see that the United States dollar is taking a high volume the currency distribution. So that means the USD is traded highly than any other currency. So we have the United States dollar at 84.9%, we have the Euro at 81.9, and the JPY, GDP, AUDHF, CAP. So these are their volumes, their level of participation. So this tells you that, that these currencies are the major currencies. So that was why I said they are the major currencies. Now, how do, how are these currencies being traded? How are that, how are they traded? Because these currencies, we don't hold physical assets in the financial market. And we don't um, exchange these currencies. Then how do we go about trading? Trading entails buying and selling. How do I go about buying? How do I go about selling? How do I get this thing done? What is the what is the ideology behind what is going on? The first point here is currencies are traded in pairs. So that means currencies are being paired. They don't go as one, they are paired. That is one currency is paired to another currency. That is bringing two currencies together. Secondly, currencies are traded through a broker. So that means I need a broker in order for me to trade. I cannot do the trading on my own as an individual. I need a broker in order to trade. So for example, the Euro and the US dollar, these are two currencies. So when I get them together, this is Euro USD. So that means on your trading platform, you're not going to see Euro standing alone. You're not going to see USD or GDP or AUD or New Zealand standing alone. You're going to see currency pairs standing. So you, when you check out your trading instruments, you're going to see currency pairs. You're going to see Euro, USD, GDP, JPY, and what have you. So when you trade in the forex market, you buy or sell currency pairs. So currency here is in parenthesis, telling you that it mustn't be currencies. You can decide to buy or sell cryptos. You can decide to buy or sell energies. You can decide to buy or sell commodities. So we are just using the currencies as a case study. Finally here, exchange rate fluctuates based on which currency is stronger or weaker at the moment. So since these currencies are being paired, just like a tug of war, so that means uh, an activity is going at both sides. So definitely we're going to have some level of imbalance. We're going to have some level of imbalance, just like we have in a tug of war. So you notice that there, there will be fluctuation, there will be drag. So at one point, one currency is going to be stronger than the other, and at one point, one currency is going to be very much weaker than the other. So these fluctuations enable us to trade in the market. Market size. Right now, we're going to look at the size of the market. How large is this forest market? What are the opportunities that we stand to gain in this market? Why should we participate in this market? Why is it relevant? So first of all, this is the largest financial market in the world. 
with its over 6 trillion daily trade volume. So this is very huge. So first of all, FX or Forex or Spot FX trading is the largest financial market in the world. So on a daily basis, there are high trading volume, up to 6 trillion daily volume. So it is huge. It is huge. So as we go down the class, we're going to understand the advantage of this large volume. So the forest market neither has a physical location nor a central exchange. It is considered an over-the-counter or interbank and or interbank class interbank market due to the fact that the entire market is run electronically within a network of banks continually over a 24-hour period. So first of all, the forest market does not have a certain location. So it is not a central exchange. We have different central exchanges. We have the New York exchange. We have, um, we have most nations have their exchange. Even in Nigeria, we have the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Or what the New York Stock Exchange. We have the, uh, the Chinese Stock Exchange. So many um, global participators in the market have a place where they do their transactions. And these guys are part of the forex market. They are part of the forex market. So, but here in the forex market, the forex market is what is known as the over-the-counter or the interbank market. So, as we go down the class, we understand what is the interbank, the interbank market. So, just know that this transaction is done electronically, and it's done continuously over a 24 hour period. That means it's a non-stop transaction. It's a non-stop market. It's a non-stop market. There is high participation and there is high liquidity. So now this is liquidity. So liquidity is very vital. It's very, very, very vital. Without liquidity, the forest market cannot give the opportunity that it gives. So with liquidity, you can be able to um, participate in, a, in any market you find yourself. It can be the real estate market. Whatever market it is, once that market has a high liquidity, it is good to participate in that market. So what is liquidity? Liquidity describes the extent to which an asset can be bought or sold quickly at stable prices and converted to cash. So, so which market in this world can you buy an asset and the asset doesn't depreciate while you have it in your hand? Probably I bought a new car and um, just trying to drive the car out of where I bought it. I cannot sell it at that same price. You know, not just not just because of the value. Another time is the, the speed of the conversion. Maybe I bought a piece of land from somebody. I bought a piece of land for one million naira. Paramenture, I see another buyer that wants to take it up from me at 1.2 million naira. It is possible that I'm making profit, but how fast can that profit be? How fast can it be? The person is not gonna pay me. The person is going to uh, maybe get a surveyor, maybe get a middleman, you know, when he's going to do a lot of documentary and all those stuff. So that is, that is um, insufficient liquidity. That is a fair liquidity in that market. So the forest market gives you a large liquidity. So that's why it's called the spot market, the spot effects. So you can be able to transact at a very high speed. You can be able to buy, you can be able to sell immediately. I can be on a buy trade and I decide to sell at the same time. And all this can happen within the snap of my finger. So secondly, it is a measure of how many buyers and sellers are present and whether, trans um, whether transactions can take place easily. So just like I told you, why do these things happen? 
why is there a high liquidity in the forex market? Why? Because there are many buyers and many sellers. 24-7, there are many buyers, there are many sellers willing to buy at a certain price, willing to sell at a certain price. So at the price they are willing to buy, someone else is willing to sell. So this is what makes the financial market possible. So I'm, I'm giving you the picture so that you can believe that the market is not imaginary. The market is not a Ponzi scheme. The money is not coming from a fairy tale. It's a zero sum market. So while you are buying, someone is selling. So that is transaction. So money is just changing on um, different location. So money is not it's not fizzing out, it's not fizzing out from somewhere else. So, so buyers and sellers are present in the market at all times. So because they are present, transactions can take place easily. Now, finally, liquidity is considered high when there is a significant level of trading activity and when there is both high supply and demand for an asset as it is easier to find a buyer or a seller. So sometimes the market could express a low liquidity. So you have to clearly know when is the market at its high liquidity. So this is when, when there is a significant level of trading, trading activity, there's a significant level of trading activity going on. And also there is high supply and high demand. You know, when there are high supply, you have the sellers are selling up. When there's high demand, you have buyers coming in to buy. So it's just um, have this picture in your mind. So this is what creates the big opportunity in the financial market. Now, since we've been able to look down and um, see the possibility to trade, the next point here is the advantages of Forex. What are the advantages of trading the Forex market? Why do I have to trade? The first one here is a 24 hour market. So the Forex market is in operation around the clock, non stop, 24 7, is a seamless 24 hour market. So the market is always on. The market is always on, like that means it doesn't have a, an official time of opening or an official time of closing. It's always on. So that gives me an advantage. That gives me the power to decide when I want to trade. That gives me the power to decide when I want to rest. That gives me the power to um, do other things I want to do. So this is an advantage to me because um, it is not it is not time fixed. It is not um, going to open by 8 a.m. and close by 1 p.m. No, it's round the clock, even during weekends. Now, the second advantage is high liquidity. I've explained extensively on liquidity. So, the high liquidity that the financial market provides gives you that opportunity to trade and gives you that opportunity to make money in the financial market. First of all, high liquidity allows you to buy and sell at will. You can be able to buy and sell at your will. Why? Because the market always have buyers and sellers. There are always buyers, there are always sellers in the market. So you can decide to buy at any time, you can decide to shut down the trade and sell and shut down the trade that is high liquidity. That is high liquidity. And that is a very big opportunity. The second point here is set. High liquidity allows you to set your online trading platform to automatically close your position once your desired profit level is attained. So when you attain your profit level, you can decide to automate um, your trades. You can decide to automate your trade. That is when you are by setting your take profit. When you, after buying an asset and you've accumulated some profits, you decide when to automatically leave the market. So this is one of the big opportunities in the financial market. You can decide to say, "Oh, I'm taking my profit here. 
is okay. Whether, it's, whether the price is still, is, is still rising, I'm okay at this point. So you may go or whatever you want to go and do, and that's, that's oppression we have because there's an automatic option that you've set in place. So that will just happen. Finally, you can close a trade if the trade is going against you. So fine, maybe you bought an asset and the asset is now selling off. Decide to sh shut down the losses and stop. Compared to when you are trading, when you are buying stocks, maybe you bought physical stocks of a company and the price of the stock collapses, you are bound to lose your whole capital. But in the forest market, your whole money is not exposed. A minimal portion of your money is exposed, so you can decide to shut down the losses. So that is what high liquidity can do for you. Another opportunity here is leverage, which is very, very vital. So what does leverage bring to you? Leverage allows you to use um, a smaller capital, a small amount of money to trade. Because time before now, individuals were never allowed to participate till the boom of the internet. So um, the, the, the participation went on between big banks, so which we're going to see in the notes ahead. So let's focus on what we have here. A small deposit can control a much larger contract value. Leverage gives the trader the ability to make nice profits. And at the same time, keep risk capital to a minimum. So leverage allows you to make huge profits from a small capital. And at the same time, gives you the ability to control your risk to the minimum. So this is a very big opportunity. So forest business is not a business that probably if I don't have 10 million, I'm not going to start that business. If I don't have 10 million naira, I'm not going to make 1 million naira. Maybe in a year. If I don't have 10 million naira, I'm not going to make 2 million in a year, as the case may be. But in the forest market, maybe you have just 100,000 and you can be making a fortune of maybe up to a million naira in a year. The forest market gives you such opportunity. So that is where leverage comes in. The fourth advantage here is no middleman. There is no middleman, no third party in this business. No party will be located between the trader and the buyer or seller of the instrument traded. The cost can be either in time or fees will be eliminated. So a lot of businesses have middlemen, but this business does not have a middleman. So this will help you to eliminate cost. This cost could be maybe some fees, some charges, or maybe your time, because time is money. So these um, are the few advantages of Forex, and we still have some other advantages. The next one is no commissions. No clearance fee, no exchange fee, no government fees, no fees at all. So you are not supposed to pay, probably pay um, some amount of money to your, to your government before you start trading, or maybe you pay some clearance fees to get your goods, or maybe some exchange fees you're trying to convert money from one currency to the other. No, this um, foreign exchange is not the local, the crude foreign exchange where I use my Naira and I buy some dollar or I use my, my whatever to buy whatever, no. Remember we said that the transaction is done electronically. The transaction remains electronically. Next is no fixed lot size. You determine your own lot, your position size. This allows traders to participate with accounts as small as $100 instead of a million dollars. So you determine your lot size. So as we go down, you will know what is blood size as a position size. You will get to know what it is. But a picture of it could be probably I, I want to buy gold. And I know that one ounce of gold right now 
is up to $1,970. And this is huge. And probably I don't have a capital of 1970 just to buy one ounce of gold. Imagine if I'm to buy 10 ounces of gold. That means I should be planning on having 19,000, over 19,000 dollars. But on the forest market platform, and where I have a capital of hundred dollars, I can still buy gold. I can still buy a portion of gold, a particular lot size of gold, probably a lot size that is lesser. Maybe I can buy 10% of it. I can buy a hundred, um, I can buy a 10% of it. I can buy 1% of it. I can buy 0.1% of it as the case may be. So down the line, you will understand, you will understand um, how the lot size works. But the forest market gives us that big opportunity to participate in trades that we could not participate on our own. Another advantage here is the low transaction costs. In the forest market, we have low transaction costs. Every other business has a transaction cost. Every business has a transaction cost. But Forest has the, the, the one of the minimal transaction costs compared to the return of your investment. So this cost could appear as spread, as swap, as commission. So keep them in mind. We're going to still elaborate on them. So these costs, they are very minimal. To some level, they are very much insignificant. So they are being charged um, by, your bro by the brokerage firm. So the last point here is no autocracy. There is no autocracy in the financial market. There is no one person controlling the market. There is no monopoly. There is no one person in charge manipulating what is going on. It doesn't happen because this transaction takes place at a certain place. This transaction does not take place at a certain place. So why we go to look into the market players, the market participants, who clearly understand that there is no autocracy in the financial market. So the foreign exchange market is so huge and has so many participants, and no single entity can control the market price for an extended period of time. There are big players that can influence the price, but they can control it. So have that at the back of your mind. So who are these market participants? Who are these big players? Who are these heavy duty in the forest market? Who are these guys making these huge transactions that is hitting over $6 trillion in a day? The first and the topmost on the list are the super banks. They are called the super banks. That means they're not just ordinary banks, they are super Banks. These large banks are collectively known as the interbank market. So this is where we're going to deal with interbank market. They take on a ridiculous amount of forex transactions each day for both their customers and themselves. So I have to use the word ridiculous because it's so it's so outrageous. They run into the multiple volume in a day. So now, these banks, what is the purpose of their transaction? They transact for their customers and for themselves. So that is their own sole purpose. So these are big banks that can transact for governments. These we heard about um, US trade deal, uh, US China trade deal, U.S. farmers and Chinese um, maybe solar panels and all that, they're trying to transact and a host of. So these big banks are the guys that do the currency changing. And whenever you have um, anything related to currency changing, there has to be fluctuation in prices. Maybe um, U.S. Maybe uh, China wants to buy the U.S. dollar. They have to negotiate with the government. So you see that the government is also a participant. So by the negotiation, the US dollar price may have to drop lower so that they can buy more 
to enable their transactions on this um, foreign exchange. And we are participators. So this is one of the big players that the super banks, these super banks, the banks use the interbank market to manage exchange rates and interest rate risk. So, so these transactions that go on within the banks for themselves, they use it to manage exchange rates, they manage interest rates risk because there are some interest rates, um, there are some changes in the market that could cause loss of value in their currencies. So they decide to hold some currencies. Just like in our, in our these are super banks, but like, let me use an example of the lesser banks. For example, a bank in Nigeria, just like you can have the first bank. If you come to first bank, first bank has, inside their bank, they have, they have dollar portfolio, they have the euro portfolio, they have Japanese yen portfolio. They have their money converted to different currencies because they want to save value. So why the Nigerian currency is depreciating? No, they have money saved up. They have the currencies, the money they are holding. All those clients' money, all those deposits, they trade with it. So they've exchanged it to dollars. So when Naira collapses, they bring it back again. Who takes the gain? The bank takes the gain. The bank takes the gain. So these are transactions that go on. These are trading that go on. These are fast trading that go on at higher volume. But with time, we're going to know where we're coming. So examples of these super banks, we have the UBS, of the Barclays Capital, Dutch Bank, Citigroup, a whole lot of them. You can still check out for the opening of UBS. So the, the interbank market, know that the interbank market will transact within themselves. These big banks transact within themselves. And they have been transacting within themselves before now, before individuals have to join the forest market. The second group of participators are the large commercial companies. The large commercial companies. Now, who are these large commercial companies? These are big companies. These are big companies. Maybe the automobiles, um, the mobile phone, com the telecommunication, they are big mega companies. They are heavy duty companies. So, companies that take part in the foreign exchange market for purpose of doing business. So, companies are in the forest market. They take part for the purpose of doing business. You see, everybody has their own purpose. Apple must first exchange its US dollars to the Japanese and when it gets an electronic pass from Japan for their products. So we all know Apple produces um, laptop phones and some other devices, wristwatches, a whole lot of devices. So most of their, um, their, their accessories, most of their electronic parts are purchased from Japan. So what do they do? They need to use their own US dollars, convert it to Japanese yen before making a purchase. That is a foreign exchange. So by so doing, they have participated in the forest market. And these things affect the prices, they affect the rates. And we also are participating with our own little capital for one purpose. So the third in the line for the participators are the government and the central banks. I mentioned a little bit about the government while speaking about those um, super banks. The government are one of the major players in the forex market. The central banks are one of the major players in the forex market. How do these two entities come in in the forest market. First of all, national governments participate in the forest market for their operations, for their international trade payments, and handling their foreign exchange reserve. So all the governmental operations go through um, the financial markets. Their trade systems, I talked about their trade wars, their deals, and all that. So once there's a deal between two countries using different currencies, 
automatically there's going to be an exchange. It's going to be a foreign trade. And the ones they, they use on the price market to also handle their foreign exchange reserve. So we all know that all countries in the world has a reserve and a foreign reserve in the United States will have a reserve of money there. So at every point in time, we try to manage what we have there. So you see that we're injecting money there or we're taking money out of that place just to balance the value, just to balance our economy. Central banks affect the foreign exchange market when they adjust interest rates to control inflation. Invariably, this can affect these can affect currency formation. So the central bank, what they do is to adjust the interest rates. They sometimes increase it, sometimes they lower it. All this they do is to um, control inflation, control the value of the, the, the currency. Sometimes the currency is being devalued or is being increased. So these changes in in the in the interest rate affects the currency. So I gave some examples of some central banks. ECB, that's the central bank of Central European Central Bank, BOE is the Bank of England. BOC is the Bank of Canada, Federal Reserve for the United States, lots of more. So wherever you find yourself, the central bank there is part of this central bank. Probably they don't have uh, much volume because we already said USD, Euro, Japanese yen, card, and the rest of them are the currencies with the highest volume. Now, the fourth market participants are called the speculators. The speculators. So who are the, the speculators? So we can just use the dictionary to know what is the word speculate. So we have the commercial banks, we have the hedge funds and other financial companies represent the most important group among speculators. So speculating is you trying to predict the price of a commodity or an asset, predicting that the price is going to go high or predicting that the price is going to go low. And you trade, I want to take advantage of that movement. So foreign exchange traders, which is us and brokers, make up a relatively small segment among speculators. So from the deep, from the four partition trade uh, uh, market participants, we fall into the lowest part and we still fall into the minute part. So this clearly tells us that our trading, what we do is, is does not affect the market. That is your own trade, maybe you are buying, your buying does not make that pair to buy or your selling doesn't make it to sell. Because you want it to sell, there's no reason it's going to sell, no. We are supposed to follow what the big players are doing. Buy when the big players are buying, sell when the big players are selling because they're going to move, they're going to cause the direction of the market to move. So, speculators in foreign exchange markets want to profit from buying currency low and selling it high. So, one thing speculators do is that they want to make profit. So one thing a foreign a forex trader does is that he wants to make profit. So that is what the forex trader does. The forex trader wants to make profit. The central banks control the exchange rates. The governments they are uh, they are about they are handling their international trades stuff like that. The super banks they are about themselves and their customers. They don't care about you. The commercial companies are just there to trade for the whatever they need to to keep their business running. So they are just there to do business. So you are here to make profits only. So to cut, so you have to work on cutting down your losses and increasing your profit as much as possible. So in foreign exchange market, those speculators in foreign exchange market want to 
made profit from buying currency low and selling it. Another was also speculators trying to make a profit from fluctuations in exchange rates. So every speculator tries to make profit from fluctuations in the market. So at this point, we have um, given a little bit of review at the early part of the introduction. So we're going to also have a second segment of the introductory class. So right now we're going to go back and we're going to go back and start out with a discussion discussion forum at this time. So we're going to cut it up. Thank you.